Tell me two artists in particular. Where does Brandy fit in the picture? Because you had massive, massive success with her. And That's also that. on part one, you spoke about Michael Jackson, but we didn't get to dive deep. Is Michael Jackson in the picture at this point? Nope. He's not in the picture. I, okay. I, met, I met him. I met him. I met him when I was I met him when I was 17 years old with Teddy Riley. Yep. Riley, I met him, but I, I haven't worked, I didn't work with him yet. Brandy's next. So Mary J. Blige jumps off Brandy because Paris Davis, who was the AR at Atlantic Records at the time. He heard my Mary stuff and he liked my Mary stuff. So he got a hold of me and asked me would I meet with Brandy. So I'm in LA and we at this spot, hot spot back in the day called George's. Yep. Me and my team used to go there every Friday night. And we there at George's and Brandy comes there to meet us and it's loud, you know, it was loud. So Brandy was like, let's go somewhere, let's go to Jerry's Deli. <laughs> so we left George's and we went to Jerry's Deli and just talking about her music, and I just started telling her where I would take her. Now, mind you, Brandy came off of I Want to Be Down. Yep. She came off that she was like four million sold. She was killing it. And, and she was young and, and, and vibrant and just, you know, she was the new young girl on the scene tearing it up. And I was just, and I'm here, I'm, I'm young, but I'm confident, man. I'm just like, oh, I would do this with you. I would take you here. Like, I would take you this. I would take you much more global. I would take you more. I'm just saying these things. And she probably looking at me probably, this dude was crazy. And she's like, all right, well, let's get in the studio then. That's what she said. She's like, all right, well, let's get in the studio then. So the next day we booked Paramount Studios in LA and we worked five days in a row. And all five of those records was on the, the Never Say Never album. All five? And all five. All five made the album. Now, I think I want to say like one of the first ones was Never Say Never and Angel in Disguise, Learn a Hard, all these made the record. And and we got into a rhythm and I told I told Brandy, I was like, you should let me executive produce your album. She let me and and, and so she you was like yourself right now. Yeah, I was I, I don't know if I was just confident, man. I believe that I, I believe that when you know chemistry is you'll know it from day one. Mm -hmm. If you get in the studio and the vibe is right, then just keep keep going. Why stop it? And so and we, stop on that point for a second. Okay. You spoke about chemistry. You have worked with all types of artists, Spice Girls, Beyonce, um, Destiny's Child, Lady Gaga, just to name a few. How soon, when you get in front of them, you guys are vibing, do you know I have chemistry here or not? I, I, sometimes I can tell, I can, I can know it from even meeting, from a meeting, from an initial meeting. Really? I can, yeah, I can know it from an initial meeting. Like, okay, I can be in a meeting and know, yo, this is going to be special. I, okay, I, is there I, ever a time I, when you no, didn't think that you had chemistry and, 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 and got in the studio more, and realized? More, more times than I had, more, way more times than I felt I had chemistry. Way more times. Wow. Way more times. Way more times. And it's funny, right? I just sent a message to Mary J. Blige like two weeks ago, I just sent the message and said, my only regret in my whole career is not being able to produce a full album with you. Because I know, I know our chemistry was right and I know spiritually we're connected. And that's my only regret is not doing a full album with you because I know it would have been special. Wow. Wow. And so going back to Brandy, right? So... It's, it's kind of, you just feel it. The rhythm is right. Five days in a row, five records. We created, I created a, uh, a concept for it, right? I said, we're going to make this a cliche album. So we went and bought a cliche book. And that's where you get the titles like Never Say Never, Learn the Hard Way. I put that on everything. All of these are cliches. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's how that, that, that came to life. And, and then I, I, I convinced her to let me executive produce it. I'm like, yo. Like, let me executive produce this joint with you. And, and, and Paris Davison, you know, he fought for me at the label because I was just a new kid. So the label wasn't fully into me yet. They didn't know who I was. I, they didn't see the number one next to my name yet. You know what I'm saying? But Paris Davis went to bat for me. He fought, he fought behind clo closed doors, some serious wars, like some serious, serious wars that had my back. And I, I was then allowed to, to executive produce the project along with Craig, along with Paris and Craig Kalman. And um, and we pushed, and, and Paris Davis pushed me, and we pushed each other, and um, we pushed Brandy. And by the time I, I never forget, by the time the project was 
getting close to the end, I, I was in New Jersey, again, sitting on my dad's piano at his house, and I was playing these, this melody, and my father came in, he said, where's my tape recorder? Where's my tape recorder? He grabbed his tape recorder. That, that's a hit. That's a hit. And he knew how fast I was. Like, that's the only, probably the downside of me is I create so fast. I'll just move on to another idea. Like, sometimes I don't stay on it. I'll just, I'll just keep playing. And, but he was like, that's, a, you got to go work on that. I know that's a hit. So I took it down to the basement and that was the boy's mind. And the boy's mind was this idea that myself and Paris Davis came up with that, whoa, what if, what if Monica and Brandy did a record together? Because the, the, the rumor in the industry was they don't like each other. Right, correct. You know, the young girls tension against each other, fighting for those spots. So we put them on the same record, right? That could be something even historical and special. And so Paris went and did his thing and made it happen and got Monica on the record and all I know is, man, all I know is when it entered the Billboard charts, it was number 27 on the, on, on, on the overall charts. And the next morning I woke up to check where it was at, it was number one. The, well, oh, the next, the, the, so that's the your next, first number one? First number one. And that stayed on the charts for what? And it, jumped, and, it, and it jumped over my mentor because Teddy was number two. Teddy but, had had, he had the remix to I Get So Lonely out by Janet, which was number two. And the boy's mind jumped over that. You know, sorry, Teddy. Sorry, Janet. I love y'all both. But it jumped over that, not allowing it to go number one. And when it went number one, the thing about getting a number one is you feel different because you, you reached the top. You, you made it to the goal, right? Don't want to be a player. Didn't get there. I can love you. Didn't get there. And this is the next one coming out. So you like this. I hope this one, and then it gets there. Getting there doesn't mean anything. Let me make, let me make this very clear to producers. Yeah, and elaborate, comedy. please. Getting there, yes, celebrate the moment, but don't stay in the celebration too long. What matters is how you follow up when you get there. Okay? And, and I say that to say this. There's a big difference between the career of Buster Douglas and the career of Floyd Mayweather Jr. Absolutely. Celebrating the moment will only cost you to take another loss right after it. If you celebrate, if you stay in the celebration, like Andy Ruiz did against Anthony Joshua. Correct. And you saw it because when he fought him the second time, he was way out of shape. He came in so that means, pounds that means, heavier than the first fight. That means he celebrated too much. So I encourage people, if you, get to that, if you get that opportunity to experience success in any industry, by the way, don't celebrate too long because of that one moment. It's okay to celebrate. It's okay to cheer on your team and everybody. But don't go back and regroup and say, let's continue. Let's continue to grow from here. How do we take it to the next level? What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.